Hello, good evening and welcome to News at 10 on TV3 and 3FM 92.7. I'm Stephen Enti and this is Ghana's number one news platform. Now, tonight we'll be asking if the fears of the Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association that government seeks to monopolize the airwaves and restrict access to information are legitimate. We'll delve into all of these issues, but please stay. And uh, we're live on DSTV channel 279. But before all of this, here are the stories that made the headlines today. Media industry players have kicked against the Communications Ministry's draft policy on conditional access system on the digital terrestrial platform, which will require that viewers uh, of free-to-air digital channels pay for the service. Government is currently implementing the roadmap to migrate the country from analog to digital uh, television transmission after having missed the 2015 international deadline. And the minority in parliament has accused the ecufuado led government of reckless borrowing, contra contrary to its 2016 campaign promise not to borrow when it assumed power. At the news conference in Accra, spokesperson on finance, Keso Atufosin, said Ghana's public debt stock of close to 200 billion CDs makes it one of the highest debt distressed countries in the world. In the bulletin tonight, the Mortuary Workers Association of Ghana has called off its industrial strike. Members of the association have been on strike over low wages and poor conditions of service. According to the statement from the association, the strike was called off following the overwhelming and desperate pleas from the general public and what they described as multiple disastrous uh, health implications. The Women's Wing of the Opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, is requesting President Kufuado to render an unqualified apology to Ghanaians, particularly women, over his controversial comments made in Canada about Ghanaian women. At a news conference in Accra, the party's national women's organizer, Dr. Hannah Bisiu, noted such comments were an embarrassment to the country. And it's been a tough day for CAF's top officials after the organization's president, Ahmad Ahmad, was arrested in Paris this morning. CAF's high authorities, led now by its vice president, Amaju Pinik, say uh, they will respond to the arrest. Right, so those were our major news headlines. Uh, remember that you can catch us live on 3FM 92.7. We're streaming on Facebook and on 3news.com. And we're also live on DSTV channel 279. Up next is the big one. Welcome back. Now, media industry players have kicked against the communications ministry's draft policy on uh, conditional access system on the digital terrestrial platform, which will require that uh, viewers of free-to-air digital channels pay for the service. Government is currently implementing the roadmap to migrate Ghana from analog to digital television transmission after having missed the uh, 2015 international deadline. Is currently implementing the roadmap to migrate the country from analog to digital television transmission after having missed the 2015 international deadline. An estimated 99% of Ghanaians exclusively rely on the free to air digital stations to access information. The Communication Ministry's draft policy on digital terrestrial television features a conditional access encryption system. Under the system, viewers of free-to-air channels would pay to access services. At a broadcasting media industry forum, participants described the draft policy as a threat to media freedom and the practice of journalism. The ministry's move to encrypt free-to-air television is an affront to media independence and freedom and a denial of the individual's right to information. Our constitution guarantees the freedom and independence of the media, the individual's right to information, and the responsibility of the media 
to hold government accountable to the people of Ghana. Since the advent of the Fourth Republic, these rights and responsibilities have been tested in diverse ways, including decisions by law courts, and today our law reports are replete with judicial pronouncements upholding the freedom and independence of the media. The draft policy document, which has finally been raised only after several agitations and similar forum in the past seem to be infested with undesirable septic shocks that will send the broadcasting industry into terminal coma should implementation be allowed without questions. The Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association and other key broadcast stakeholders have expressed discomfort about the draft policy on many grounds. Among others, that the MOC moved to encrypt free-to-air television as an affront to media independence and freedom and a denial of the individual's right to information. Executive Director of the Media Foundation for West Africa, Suleiman Abraima, requested wider consultation of all stakeholders with the Ministry of Communication on the draft policy. I certainly believe that it is something that requires a lot of consultation, a lot of engagement, which as far as I can understand, the ministry is not doing. Yes, the ministry may have the power to set policies, the ministry may have power to, to, to take certain decisions, but at the end of the day, those decisions are being taken on behalf of the people and on behalf of the industry. The Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association, GIBA, has also expressed concern about government having control of the body that will oversee the country's digital terrestrial technology. All right, so uh, let's uh, take a look at some uh, critical uh, information relating to the case uh, Giba is making. Uh, if you look at what we have here, uh, one of the most important uh, figures you should be looking at is that less than 1% of uh, people in Ghana watch paid television. So if government is seeking to uh, source revenue from uh, this, there will be only 1%. And there are 5.8 million households in Ghana. And out of that, uh, over 4.8 million of these uh, households have TVs. And 99% of those who uh, have TVs in their household rely exclusively on free-to-air television. So only a few people have uh, paid television services. We have various uh, uh, paid television services, uh, so I don't want to go mentioning all of them. And 1.1 million of the 4.6 million TV viewing households are vulnerable and cannot uh, pay or afford set-top boxes. That, that, that's very critical. So of the many people who watch, uh, there are a huge number who cannot afford. Uh, Giba is making the argument that the, the, the measures and systems put in place by government for the migration will limit access. Uh, and this comes as, especially from the fact that uh, a lot of people cannot pay for set-top boxes. And also there are the argument have been made that uh, some seven-member board of Central Digital Migration a company that will be set up uh, will be governed by us because all the members uh, that will be on it uh, will have been appointed by government by the way uh, the structures work and uh, quite a number of uh, uh, issues have been happening uh, uh, the history we have suggests that in uh, 2017 uh, the Ghana and other countries uh, came together to set up a deadline uh, of <coughs> June 17, which was not met, and the same year, uh, 2017, an industry technical committee was set up. This was uh, to enable the regulation of all of this. Uh, it never ended anywhere. A National Digital Broadcasting Migration Technical Committee uh, was also uh, set up, established in uh, 20 June. January 13, I beg your pardon, uh, 2010. And in August, uh, the National Digital Broadcasting Migration Technical Committee, which is acronym NDBTC, submitted a report uh, that was approved uh, by Cabinet. You would also know that KNET, uh, as we stand now, has built some 42 transmission sites, 20 of, of, of which are connected uh, to the national grid, which means that uh, that 20 are live. In 2018, there were concerns that government had uh, waived eight different taxes and levies, which amounted to over three million. Uh, Start Times is also in the question, and they've been a beneficiary of uh, 
a tax waiver as a satellite-based platform. That is different from uh, what the government said in the <coughs> DTT arrangement. One of the things Giba is worried about is the fact that government is handing over the control of our media to a foreign entity like Star Times and uh, going back on set plans. Uh, Star Times, you would know, that is due for a waiver that will provide, <coughs> we are told, some 6,000 households in uh, 300 villages with satellite digital boxes. But all of these arguments, uh, the communications ministry, we are told, has directed that there is a seizure of manufacturing and importation of free to uh, set up uh, boxes which uh, are integrated or integrated uh, digital television sets which are approved by the standards authority and relevant authorities like the NCA. So uh, there are fears and these fears have been heightened uh, by Giba who thinks that the implementation of this draft policy in the form it is will require controlled access a new set of boxes and it will also give government a huge monopoly over this. And we're trying to get <coughs> the, a member of the Communications Committee of Parliament, uh, Sam George, to join us. Uh, when we do, we'll bring him on so we can have that conversation. So the big argument facing us right now are the fears of uh, Giba in, in, in fearing that there will be controlled access when the current plan has been implemented. Sule Braima is the Executive Director of the Media Foundation for West Africa. Also thinks that the issues of a limited or controlled access hinges on the right of information and media freedom generally. This is what he said are the media uh, engagement organized by Giba. Let's hear him. Oh, this is something that relates to press freedom, independence of the media, freedom of expression. And indeed, perhaps it is the most fundamental thing because we're talking about a situation when, if allowed, as we are being told now, thousands of people are going to be deprived of access to television. But we are being told that no, this time around, it's not just your digital TV. You know, beyond your digital D TV, if you, if you have a DSTV decoder or Go TV decoder or whatever it is, no, it won't work. You know, you now have to get another one. And there is a group that has the capacity to ensure that even though City TV is producing, whether you can watch or not depends on whether you pay or you don't pay. It's a big freedom of expression issue. It's a big independence of the media issue because... Who is regulating what? Who ensures that I'm able to access? Or who, who makes it possible for me to uh, be able to access? And that is why the point about the, the, the board is so critical. If you have a situation where entities are going to be created, stakeholders, key stakeholders such as GIBA, not fully consulted for them to be on board, and we say, let this go, I don't think that we'll be creating something well, that is worthwhile. Now, Kofi Abochi, who is also a legal practitioner, has been explaining that uh, levies and controls have been around for some time and there are uh, precedents uh, for this. Provides in Article 21 that everyone has the right to information. In my opinion, that is a foundation, that is a bedrock. Media provides that information. Whatever spectrum or rather whatever uh, facility is put in place to, as it were, obstruct that information may therefore ordinarily raise questions for answer. Now, if you go further into the Constitution under Article 163, impediments to the establishment of media houses are not allowed ordinarily. So if you put that together with the right information, then one can say that ordinarily, each and everyone has a right to set up a media house, be it radio, television, or print, and that person or entity should not suffer impediment ordinarily. However, there was a decision in our court when a challenge was brought as to the relevancy or the legality of imposing a licensing requirement to the establishment of the media houses. And the courts, on practical grounds, decided that because there is a limitation to the spectrum, because there's a limitation to the various um, media by which information can be transmitted, not everyone can ordinarily just go set up a media house um, and, 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 you know, and then so be it. That there must be a minimum licensing regulatory option for the states. So the Supreme Court qualified that right that ordinarily you and I could have to just set up a media house, so to speak. Therefore, licensing has been accepted over the years. But the Supreme Court then qualified it with another provision of the Constitution, which is Article 164, which deals with 
reasonable restrictions that are allowed in a democracy. The National Media Commission is a regulatory body. The Ministry of, the Ministry of Communication is a sector ministry. These bodies are allowed to impose restrictions. They are allowed to impose relevant and necessary restrictions. The only qualifying criterion is the necessity of those restrictions. Discretionary powers, when conferred on a body, can be exercised by that body. In the case of restrictions on the media, the test is necessity, i.e., is the imposition necessary and justified, i.e., is there an alternative means by which this same policy could have been implemented without that restriction? If there is no alternative means, then it means it's necessary. The only problem, as one can see here, some impositions of levies sometimes come in the character of taxes. And the Constitution has a restriction on the imposition of taxes. So whatever, whatever, levy, whatever levy is imposed on citizens, that may have the character of taxation. There's a requirement that Parliament have to approve it. If it, is, if it is, again, the case that there's going to be an imposition of a levy that all of us have to pay, then my expectation is that there must be some parliamentary oversight. Right, so that's Kofi Abochi there. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, discussion. We'll be bringing in uh, Sam George, Sam George Nate, MP for Ningo Pram Pram, who is a member of the uh, Communications uh, Committee of Parliament, who will be coming and uh, will be tossing these issues around a little bit for you. So please stay. This is still News at 10 live from the News Hub at Addis Kanda in Accra. We'll be right back. Right, so welcome back. Uh, we're privileged to have uh, Sam George Nate, who's MP for Ningo Prabhu Prabhu and a member of the Constitutional, uh, sorry, the Communications Committee of Parliament. Uh, Mr. Nate, uh, Honourable Nate, how are you, sir? Very well. Great. So tell me, I mean, I'm sure many Ghanaians would like to understand on what basis Giba is expressing all the fears that they're expressing. Can you break it down for us? Well, and let me just issue a caveat that these are my personal views mm. and not the views of the Parliamentary Committee on Communications. Um, Giba has sent a petition to the committee. I have read the petition and I think that the petition makes some level of sense to me. We have various kinds of licenses that are given to free to all, to TV mm. station operators, free to air digital terrestrial, free to air digital satellite, and then you also have the paid for digital terrestrial and paid for satellite TV. So take for example, TV3, which is a part of the media general group. Mm. TV3 has a free to air digital terrestrial license. And if you go to the NTA's website, that kind of, that category of licenses are described as digital television signals that are sent to homes and received without any cost attached. Mm. So there's a difference between your license and the license of say a DSTV or a Go TV okay, or a FS Digital. Now what you see is the government is trying to, in, part, in, in, in implementing a digital terrestrial television migration policy, which we, we are being told is a draft. If it's a draft, you then want to find out how they are mm -hmm. implementing a draft. You must implement a finalized document. Yeah. Um, what you see is that they're introducing what they call conditional access. Now, conditional what access... Which cost con to our operations, yes. like now, for you to be able to watch t uh, TV3 or any absolutely. other... Absolutely. So what, what, what it basically says, what conditional access does is that it's a software that is put in as a, as a, in, in a set-top box, which now prevents your free to air channel. So what, what is happening today is that there are people who are watching us, who are watching us because they have a digital TV. Yeah. So they just tune their TV and it, they pick you up your yeah. signal because you're sending your signal straight. You're sending your signal to the head end. Mm -hmm. The head end picks it up, sends it out through the multiplex, through 42 transmitter sites. And then once you have a digital TV, you get it. If you have an analog TV, you can watch uh, TV3 through, through a set-top box or what we call a decoder. Yeah. Now what is going to happen is that, and this is because your license is free to air. Now, what's going to happen when they introduce conditional access is you will still send your signal out the same way. The signal will still get to my house where I have a digital TV, but I can't watch the digital TV. It's going to be scrambled unless I make payment to uh, the state, which they're calling a digital access fee, but which is basically the TV licensing act. Mm -hmm. And for, for, for want of any doubt, I mean, the ministry is trying to implement a law that is a cake. Act, or it's the NLCD 89 which is a TV licensing act of 1966. And what it says in section 13 is interesting. That's the interpretation section. It interprets what a television receiving set is. Mm. 
because it says anybody who has a television receiving set must pay a license fee. Now, it says a television receiving set is an apparatus constructed solely for the reception of pictures with or without sound transmitted by radio. Today, TV3 is not transmitting by radio. Yeah. You are transmitting a digital feed yeah. through the national spectrum. Again, I can watch TV3 on my phone through yeah. your live stream. That's not by radio. Yeah. So it clearly means that I am not bound by this act. Again, this act was passed in 1966. But the supreme law of the land today is the 1992 constitution. constitution. The 1992 constitution is clear that there shall be no impediment to the access of news, entertainment, and information by way of imposition of a cost. So it then means that the NLCD 89 of 1966 is in contravention of portions of, 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 of our constitution, the 1992 constitution. But there have been legal arguments that uh, state institutions uh, who, which are set up have the uh, legitimacy to put in some limited restrictions or regulations where necessary, necessity. Well, it must not fly in the face of the 1992 constitution, which says because the TV license, there is no law in this country that mandates collection of any fees for as digital access or as TV license except the NLCD 89. Okay, which is a 1966 law. It made sense in that time. In today's day and age, there's been no amendment in th to this law by parliament to make it in conformity with the 1992 constitution. Mm -hmm. The 1992 constitution says that any law that was promulgated before the coming into force of the 92 law, that is, not in, that is in conflict with the 92 law, is bad law. So you cannot be seeking to implement this law. Again, the question we should ask ourselves is, Media General had a business model. Your business model was to build your own content. Take, for example, Music Music. Mm -hmm. It's one of your big or talented kids which you yeah, just finished. Just and congratulations, congratulations to Nakia, yeah. who, who just won. It's one of your own productions that you build and it's at cost to you. It costs you so much to put so, that production. Yeah. But you send it out and what you do is the reach you get for talented kids is what you translate through your marketing team into sales. To revenue. To revenue. Mm -hmm. Now, what is going to happen is that is the model you choose. Now, your model is being changed for you without any consultation with you by, by, by the NTA. And the NTA doesn't have the power to do that. Because what the NTA is now doing is saying that you can no longer reach the number of eyeballs that you use for your marketing projections when you are selling advertising slots on, 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 on talented kids. Because kits. people who are watching because you may have to pay. May have to pay. And if people and if cannot, cannot pay, afford, you're losing those eyeballs. And there are about 1.1 uh, million uh, people who And that is the, bare, the barest minimum, minimum who cannot afford it. Mm. So there's, there's a possibility that there are more people than that. Because, I mean, someone may just want to watch only talented kids or TV3's programming at a certain point in time. You say he has to pay a certain amount of money for something he's been used to watching for free. What's the incentive to pay for but it? But the, 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 the other argument is that how can government do all these migration and, uh, for free? It's not for free. Government can make the same revenue it wants to make if government chooses not to be lazy. How, One, do you, how do you mean? TV3 is going to be paying a connection fee, a transmission fee to the to, to government. But for there's using, a, that, for that's, using, for using that's a cost to the migration, isn't it? No. Basically, government, and, and let's, not, let's, let's not forget where they started from in 2006 and all the way until even 2015 under mm. the government I served in. The media houses wanted to run their own transmission. Government decided that we would build one uniformed infrastructure. infrastructure. Fine. So government accepted to take on that cost. Government has also indicated that it will share the cost of transmission with the broadcasters. The broadcasters are not disputing that. They're not, so complaining. If they're, they're not complaining. So if broadcasters are going to be paying for using the transmission infrastructure, which is the digital platform, the multiplexes, the 40-channel multiplex that you have, now you want to impose another cost that would inhibit the, the, the content that they are selling. It's a problem. If government, and, and I've watched, give, if you read Giba's uh, proposal, Giba's complaints to us, they make proposals. We have a street light levy that's imposed in our electricity bills. It's very negligent, negligible, very small amount. You know, if you put in even 0 0.15 pesos across the country for everybody on electricity bill, government will earn more than it seeks to earn from here. If you decided to even put it on petrol, if you decided to even look at other, other models that have been suggested for government to raise this revenue, and if you're, if, if you're talking about the poor people who may, or the, the indigent in our society who may not be able to afford it, you say it's going to increase their electricity bill, that model looks at taking out those who are on lifeline mm. and ensuring that those who are industrial and residential consumers who right. buy a certain level pay as they are paying the M electricity Mr. Nati, bill. I know that this is an argument. We, this is a discussion we have to continue. But uh, quickly, I want to understand what the NDC's alternative module will be. Well, 
we, we, I mean, we, because you don't like the, the way this is being absolutely. implemented. Absolutely. How would you do it different? The draft policy that we, we have now was put together in 2015 under the NDC. In that draft policy, there was no digital access fee. So you will finalize that document well, to start? Well, well, well the government, yeah. oh, the, the, the Minister for Communication claims she has finalized it without consultation with stakeholders. She didn't consult but Giba. But they said that they've consulted. Well, well, she didn't consult Giba. She didn't consult the Parliamentary Select Committee. We are stakeholders. We, so we do not know who she consulted with. I've challenged that they should put out the minutes of that meeting where they had that consultation. But the bottom line for me is a future NDC government, God willing, in January 2021, would review the policy and take on board the consent of Giba. We will look and sit with Giba, who are stakeholders in this in, in this industry, to ensure that we, we put in place a framework that is not going to disadvantage the, the, our, our broadcasting companies, a framework that is not going to ensure that we deprive Ghanaians of their free-to-air television content, a framework that ensures that equity is brought into the system and we do not change the business models right. of, of, of broadcasters. So that is one promise we can make, that we're going to sit and engage industry players and have a framework that serves the purposes of everybody. Right, Honourable Sam George. Uh, we're grateful for your time. Sam George is MP for Ningo Pram Pram, a member of the Communications Committee of Parliament. I'm Stephen Enti. Thank you very much for making time to be with us and thanks for leaving your dial on uh, 3FM 92.7. Thanks for your time. And we have the crew. Good night. There is more news at 3news.com.